So let's look at example number three that deals with inelastic collisions. So let's begin. Suppose that you shoot a block that has a mass of 1.5 kilograms vertically upward. If the bullet reaches a velocity of 350 meters per second before impact, how far up will the block travel? Now we're going to make the assumption that the mass of the bullet is 50 grams. So this is our system. We have a block on the ground that has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. Now we take a gun and we shoot our block with the gun vertically upward and now our bullet reaches a velocity of 350 meters per second before actually hitting our block. And then the final system is the block with the bullet because that bullet gets embedded, it gets stuck within that block. And we, uh, we want to find the total height our bullet and the block system travels before it begins moving downward. So what's the maximum height our system reaches? So we're going to use the fact that momentum is conserved every time we talk about inelastic collisions. Remember, mechanical energy such as kinetic energy is not conserved, but momentum is conserved. So my mass 1, the mass of the bullet, times the velocity of the bullet plus mass 2 of the block times velocity 2 of that block equals the system, the final system, which is the bullet embedded in my block. So mass 1 plus mass 2 is my final system. They combine. So multiply that by the velocity. Now we don't know what the velocity is. That's what we want to find because our velocity will give us how much kinetic energy was created or was transformed. Now the m1 and m2 we know. v2, what's our velocity initial of the block? Well it's simply zero. Our block is not moving. What's the velocity initial of our bullet? Well it's 350 meters per second. So let's plug in our knowns and we find that 50 grams is actually 0.05 of a kilogram because we divide this by 1,000. There are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. We find that our mass of the bullet is 0.05 kilograms multiplied by 350 meters per second plus zero because our initial velocity of the block is zero equals in parentheses 1.5 kilograms of the block plus 0.05 kilograms of the bullet because now our final system is the bullet plus the block multiplied by the velocity that we're trying to find. So let's multiply these guys out and divide by 1.5 plus 0.05 and we get approximately 11.3 meters per second. So this is the velocity, the initial velocity or the final velocity of the block and the bullet. So when the bullet gets embedded in this block, our system, the block plus the bullet, begins to travel with a velocity of 11.3 meters per second. Now eventually that system of the, of the bullet as well as the block will come to a stop. Its velocity will be zero and we want to find the height at which our velocity is zero. So first we have to find how much kinetic energy this amount of velocity represents. Well, kinetic energy is equal to one half times m times v squared equals one half. Now our block plus the bullet has a mass of 1.55 kilograms multiplied by the, the square of 11.3, the distance. And we get 98.96 joules. So that's how, that's how much energy, kinetic energy, our system has initially. Now, when all that kinetic energy is transformed into potential energy, that represents the highest height. In other words, that represents the point at which our velocity is zero. So that means we simply equate this amount to mgh, and then we solve for our h. So we divide by mg and we get 98.96 divided by 1.55 times 
9.81 and we get a height, a maximum height of 6.51 meters. So our block and the bullet system reaches a height of 6.51 before it begins going back down because its velocity at the highest height is zero.